Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. Uh, today, we are going to be unpacking the Dallas Mavericks' first two games during the NBA restart. And so for anybody who has watched my videos in the past about the Mavericks, you guys probably know that there are two things that are of paramount importance to me. The first of which is defense. I know it's such a cliche, but it's true. Defense wins championships. And if you don't play defense on an elite level, you're not going to make noise in the playoffs, period, the end. So what does it say about a team's defense like the Dallas Mavericks when, as a team, you score 149 points in your first game and 115 points in your second game, but you're 0-2. You have yet to get your first victory in the NBA restart. Listen, this Dallas Mavericks team can score. Offensively, we can score with the best of them in the league. No one's going to debate that. But when you start talking about a team like the Phoenix Suns, who are not even going to sniff the playoffs, a team that the Mavericks just lost to. I'm not even really sure why the Suns are in Orlando, to be honest with you. And the Suns not only did they beat the Mavericks, but in key stretches down the later part of the game, they lost both DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker, their two best young players. They lost them to foul trouble. And they were out for huge stretches during the games. Guys, if the Mavericks lose to this team in those circumstances, this is bad. And so I said that there were two things of paramount importance. The second thing is that all of the Dallas Mavericks key scorers have to be ready to play all the time, all of them. Again, if we want to make noise in the playoffs. And Seth Curry, a guy that I love, who has always played the best basketball of his pro career while playing for Rick Carlisle, the guy did he put up a goose egg, let's call it what it is, against the Houston Rockets. Tim Hardaway Jr., this guy, another guy who I love, against the Suns, goes 1 for 12 from the field and 0 for 8 from the 3, and only had 2 points all night. So kind of getting away from that, going into schematically what the Mavericks were doing at the end of games when they were either trying to win or force overtime, the Mavericks just very simply were taking threes when they didn't need to for both of these last two games. Kristaps, against the Rockets, took a three-pointer at the very end of the Houston Rockets game when the Mavericks were only down by two points. And it doesn't take a basketball expert to find out that when you're only down by two, what do you do? You go to the cup, get a high percentage easy bucket down low, get the, you get the bucket or maybe even get fouled, knock down both free throws, and you tie the game. And at that point, you put the pressure back on Houston to respond at the end of the game. And then, of course, for the Suns game, you know, Luka, for, for, there were so many things that were wrong there. Luka, at the very end of the game, Mavericks are down by two. Luka is the guy who inbounds the ball. I don't have any idea what the Mavericks were thinking on that one. Why the, the most potent scorer that the Mavericks have on their team is the guy who's inbounding the ball. Luka has to be one of the guys out there. He's got to be one of, the, uh, one of the options to score. And then to go even past that, Luka is the one inbounding. And who did he pass to? He passed it to Tim Hardaway Jr., a guy who was shooting only 9% from the floor to that point all night. And again, listen, I love Tim Hardaway Jr. And I want him to be a Maverick for a long time. But you don't take a three-pointer in that. You don't shoot a three-pointer in that situation when you're only down by two. And by the way, we were also inbounding underneath the basket. We got tall guys, we got some length on our team. We could toss it to one of the big fellas and have them get an easy bucket. Boom, overtime. So there are just a number of things that, that I, I needed to address in terms of that. Um, and listen, the reason why I was so looking forward, one of the many reasons why I was looking so forward to the NBA restart is because I'm sitting here as a Mavericks fan thinking like, yes, now we can go ahead and run the table and jump past teams like Houston and other teams that are right ahead of us in the West and give the Mavericks a great chance or a better chance at a better seed. And now we got a great chance at advancing a round or two in the playoffs if we get to one of the higher seeds. And by the way, the reason why I thought of all that is because the Mavericks are good enough to do it. 
And selfishly, if you want to ask me, I'd love to play Oklahoma City in the first round. Get the brooms out for that one. The Mavericks would wipe the floor with the thunder. And if the Mavericks end up staying right where they're at, and if they don't get up a higher seed, and if they stay right at seven, and if the Mavericks have to play one of the Los Angeles teams in the first round, and let's say in a playoff series against one of the L.A. teams, the Mavericks go down by two games. It's like, you know, we're down two games to one. And let's say that it's a must win. You don't, you don't want to go down three games, and Tim Hardaway Jr. lays an egg, or Seth Curry lays an egg. We're toast. That's the ball game. We're going home. And, and I don't want to hear, oh, like, it's going to be okay because Memphis lost to the Spurs, and because of that, it automatically puts the Mavericks in the playoffs. So now, no matter what, the Mavs will be in the postseason regardless of anything. It's not okay by virtue of that. And I don't want the Mavericks to play one of the Los Angeles teams in the first round, which, by the way, is where we're at right now. And think about the matchup. If the Mavericks play the Lakers, LeBron James is going to check Luka, and Anthony Davis is going to check Kristaps Porzingis. And that's a matchup that bodes really, really well for the Lakers, not for us. And if you talk about the Mavericks playing the Los Angeles Clippers... What I personally would do is I'm putting Paul George, an excellent defensive player, I'm putting him on Luka, and I'm putting Kawhi on KP. And we know what Kawhi can do on the defensive end. And we know how inconsistent Chris Dapps has been so far this year offensively. Now, again, in my, my previous videos about the Mavs, I was very critical of Chris Stapps. And earlier in the season when he was only giving you, you know, 10 points sometimes, I'm sitting here saying, hey, man, you got to do more. We got to do more. And he proved me wrong. By the time March rolled around, KP really got into his rhythm and you started to see the unicorn in full form. And his numbers, by the way, during the restart also have been excellent. Better than what you could have asked for. But Chris Dabbs has never seen anything like Kawhi Leonard checking you in a postseason series. So look out. But I'm going to kind of wind down here a little bit on a positive note. Guys, there is still room. There is still room to run the table. The Mavericks still got six games left. And if we win six straight, maybe get a few key losses from Houston or OKC, now we're talking about Mavericks potentially slipping up to maybe the 5-6 seed. And tell me we can't make some noise then. Of course we can. So here's the key thing. Here's how you do it. You get your act together defensively. Disrupt the passing lanes. Get steals. You do that, then you're going to get this team out in the fast break. Luka would be like Magic Johnson running Showtime out there. And then secondly, the Mavericks, like I said before, have a lot of length on their team. You got KP, you got Bovey, you got Maxi Kleba. These guys can make athletic plays. They can bully some of the small teams down low. And they can get some key blocks defensively, shift the momentum. You get that going while scoring the way that this Mavericks team is scoring. And the way that Luka and KP are playing so far during the restart, call me a homer if you want to. If we get it going defensively the way I know we can, there is no one in this league that can even touch us. And I'll say it again. The Mavericks are good enough to do it. So now it's time to go do it. So thanks so much for watching, everybody, and more videos to come.